Hello everyone and welcome to another e-learning how-to guide. In this guide I'm going to be covering feedback activities. Now feedback activities are useful for when you want to gather some detailed information from your students. Now this is um, this is different to a poll or choice activity because you can have several different types of question in one activity um, and these can be open questions which are answered with text boxes which allows for a lot more sort of detailed information. Um, this activity can be used for whatever you wish. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything to do with feedback. So that's up open to how you want to use it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start this off by um, demonstrating a feedback activity that is used by our staff development team and I'm going to demonstrate this from a student's perspective so this is what a student will see so let's click on that activity there now as you can see there's a title here there's a description below that and then there is a button to continue so I'm gonna go ahead and continue there and now as you can see there's a list of questions here that are answered on the right there are different kinds, there are open questions here with text boxes but these are multiple choice now effectively a student will just fill that in and submit that right now I'm going to show you how this works from the teachers perspective so if I return to my normal role Now, if I click on this feedback activity, you can see that there are more tabs. Now, there is an, an analysis tab. This tab allows you to look at all the information you've collected as a whole. This is totally anonymous, by the way. Um, so that's all your information collated. And you also have responses, which are from specific people. Now, you can set up feedback activities so students can see the analysis tab, but you cannot set it so they can see the responses tab. That will always be um, private for the teachers on the course. But um, you'll find out more about that later. It's time to show you how to create one. Okay, so as always, you begin by turning editing on in the top right corner and then scrolling down to the topic box where you want to place the activity using this right drop down add an activity and feedback and then first of all you have the name this is what will be displayed to students on the actual Moodle course so I'm just gonna give that a quick name then you have a description and you then have a timing option now you can make the feedback activity only available at a certain time if not just leave those boxes unchecked and then you have some further feedback options now to start off you have record usernames this means in the responses tab um, whether or not people will be anonymous now either way this is only viewable by the teachers on the course below that you have show analysis to students this is the tab that shows the overall um, all the information you've collected now that's up to you whether you think students should be able to see it send email notifications this will go to all the teachers on the course and it will be done for every submission so that could be very annoying it could be very useful that's totally up to you now multiple submit this means people can submit again to the feedback activity however it does not mean they get a new post, instead they just get to edit their old post. Um, 
so that's important to consider if you want to use that feature and then you have automated numbers for each question that's pretty self-explanatory it will just um, allocate an ordered number sequence to the questions um, and then you have this box here after submitting now this is the text the students will see once they have completed the activity um, so I'm just going to put a quick message in there and then you have a URL for continue button um, this is just where you want the continue button at the end to navigate the students to so I'm just going to put the um, Moodle front page in there and then there are some outcomes if you want to um, use the feedback activity for something that's graded and these last settings can be ignored so I'm going to save and display that so here you can see the information I've entered, the title, the description, the text from after submission and now I will go to add some questions so that's this second tab here edit questions now there are a range of types here but the ones I recommend are longer text answer short text answer and multiple choice I'm going to start off with a multiple choice you can choose whether the question is required or can be skipped or not um, what is your favorite color you can choose whether the uh, options are presented vertically or horizontally and you can choose whether they can only submit one answer or multiple answers to this specific question I'm just going to say they can only pick one here now it's important when doing multiple choice questions that every answer is on a new line as stated here otherwise Moodle will get quite confused so those are the answers there this is just which question this is so it's question one and I'll save that so that will now be presented like this and can be edited again through the pencil icon but let's add a different type of question I'm gonna go for a short text answer this time I want it to be required and what is your name this is how wide the text box is I recommend maybe a 10 for a short answer um, maximum characters accepted I'll say 15 because not many people have a name longer than 15 and position I can say question 2 save question what is your name now um, similar to that is the longer text answer um, I'm going to say required again and where do you live? See so another open question. Um, I'm going to say 20 width with 10 lines and position free. And as you can see, they have a much bigger box this time. Now you can experiment with these. You can edit them and make sure they're the right sort of size. Um, so yeah, that's how you create a feedback activity. Thank you for watching.